Hello everybody and welcome to Promise Gaming and another Hearts of Iron 4 Old World Blues campaign. We just finished yesterday a campaign playing as the Enclave, which was quite fun. Uh, it went very well, destroyed the bear and all of its little friends too, became genocidal maniacs. Now we are launching into another campaign as the Enclave, but this time around we are going to be going for the Reformed Route. If we are to rebuild our once great nation, we must reform ourselves and our principles. Sadly, many of the reformist elements have already deserted in the last few years, leaving mostly the devoted and the fanatical. We will have to tread carefully in our efforts to reform the Enclave into an organization fit to restore order, justice, and democracy to these United States of America. Very different way of playing the game. Kind of curious to see how it's going to turn out because, uh, as you guys may have seen in the last series, the National Focus Tree is rather massive and complicated. So I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to jump into it and hopefully we find a way to make things work. Maybe we actually can get everyone to voluntarily join. I rather doubt it. And if that's the case, then we should be preparing for war. And we already know power armor OP as freaking heck. So for our national focus, we have to start with our escape. It only takes seven days as we talk about the destruction of Navarro and what we learned from the experience. What did you learn? Not much. All right, do we want to get any um, civilian factories, or should we start with production? We don't have really anything at all. We can't build factories very quickly, and we don't have any military factories to start. I imagine we're going to get some, but even so, let's go ahead and just start by building a military factory at the Sierra Army Depot. Okay, so going back to our tech down over here, um, I don't think there's any reason not to go ahead and get started with the better power armor. We'll have to trade for it, and we're going to need a lot more factories to make it work, but it is still quite good. I'd like to go ahead and just have the technology available for producing all of my favorite stuff. I don't really care about the scrap motorcycles. We can't do anything here with the Protectrons. We could start with uh, a Doctrine, and it's not the worst of ideas, but I think we'll pass on that for the moment. Uh, naval Combat doesn't matter. I think we just go to Engineering, so let's go for Ohm's Law for some research speed and... Do we want to continue with the population? I mean, a lot of the stuff's ahead of time. I think we might end up just going for some construction tech, because I can't do anything with production efficiency if we're not producing literally anything. So, yeah, we're not going to worry about that. Let's make sure we set up our armies. I will have a Major Commanding Officer, Major General Grimm, and then probably uh, Jack Shadow Churchill or something. He did pretty well for us last time. Okay, so let's play with the game on Speed 5 and see what happens. I have not done a lot of research into the new focus tree, so I have no idea really what's coming down the pipe, but we'll have some fun with it. Years ago, we managed to escape from the destruction of the main enclave forces at Navarro. The manner in which we survived can still be felt today. We fought our way out with manpower, uh, sorry, power armor, so we gain some veterans, lose manpower for it though, uh, gain a bunch of transports and gunships, which worked out really well last time, or we just get 3,000 manpower. It's hard not to like this, because this gave us so many options for pair dropping, we just obliterated everything in our path. It just won us a lot of wars by having the vertebrates. On the other hand, manpower is quite good, and free units are good too. But yeah, I think, I think I do have to go for this. Now let's go for another national focus. We have to do our choice. This is where we are going to hold the elections, but of course this time around we are going to have a different leader emerge. In the lair of the bear. We are on the very borders of the NCR, a rogue nation occupying American soil. We cannot deny that they would destroy us if they became fully aware of our existence. Luckily for us, the bear is blind, weakened by bureaucracy, infighting, and an ineffectual leader. With the right efforts made, we can hide under the very nose of the NCR until we are strong enough to reveal our plans. But we cannot keep them in the shadows forever. It will be harder and harder to conceal ourselves as time goes on. So that's going to be the special event here where we need to spend some power to hide our activities. And we know from experience that this gets progressively more and more expensive as time goes on. And if we conquer any land, of course it gets even more expensive. My question is, as a reformed path, are we going to be even conquering any land? And if not, does that mean that we can stay hidden from the bear pretty much forever? I mean, for a good long while at least, I don't know. Our president, Sergeant Dornan, is well respected by the reformer and purist faction within the Enclave. Nonetheless, neither see him as a viable president and have presented their own candidates. The purists have Franklin Anderson, who we chose last time, and the reformers are led by Douglas Granite. Alright, so we're going to go for doc uh, Dr. Anderson, apparently. Wait. Oh, decides that Dr. Anderson is a moron. 
Douglas Granite of the Reform Faction. That's funny. Okay, yes, let's go for uh, let's go for Douglas Granite. Boom. I have no idea what this is going to do to us, but we'll try it. Our president, Sins of the Father, doesn't take long, but we should get some events where we kind of shape our leader with special events or special effects. I sort of assume that's the case because that's what happened with Anderson. There it is. Sins of the Father. Granite's past is a controversial subject in our mids. Minds? Midst? I don't know. Made all the more contentious by rumors spread by purists. The cause is Granite's father and his relationship to the Chosen One. I have no idea what that is because I'm not a Fallout junkie. The purists accuse Granite's father of treason for aiding the Chosen One and destroying the oil rig. Is that the player from one of the previous games? It might be, but lack any evidence. Despite the fact that he will deny these allegations as nothing but political slander, Douglas remembers clearly what his father told him about that faithful day. Fateful, you mean? On the oil rig. We aided the Chosen One and then went our separate ways. Non-core manpower goes up. That could be useful if we spread wide. He didn't aid the Chosen One, so we get war support and stability. Or, speaking of the Chosen One, let me tell you who the mother was. Non-core manpower and lose stability. Why on earth would I want that? Well, um, I mean, non-core manpower is amazing. I don't know what's going to happen with war support and stability, but let's go for this. Douglas's youth. After traveling around with his son for a brief few years, Granite Sr. established contact with one of the Enclave's civilian vaults. Set up as a contingency to repopulate the American mainland after the Enclave government cleansed it, since Amer uh, uh, President Dick Richard had lifted child-rearing restrictions, the vault's population had exploded. Nonetheless, it was a safer place for a child than the wasteland. Thus, Douglas spent most of his youth in the safety of the vault. Like most children in the Enclave's vaults, Granite was raised with a fervent hatred of communism. Sadly, 200 years of Enclave propaganda and living in a vault run under a command economy meant that he, and most other members of the Enclave, were left with a vague understanding of what communism was. As such, Granite... Okay, so what do I define as communism? Knew all of Amer uh, enemies of America must be communists, so we gain war support. Granite's hatred of communism will play a role in future events and is necessary to unlock anti-communist propaganda. Or spent history class playing on his Pip-Boy gain stability. Well, stability is probably better, but I have no idea what this does. So all enemies of America must be communists. Boom. That's how I see life, too. When Douglas was 17 years old, the population of the Enclave Vault reached the utter limits of its life support systems. As a result, a large portion of the healthy and strong were ordered to leave the safety of the Vault to establish contact with the largest group of Enclave remnants, led by an old Navarro drill sergeant. Douglas, however, was quick to contact with his father, granite company instead slipping away from the rest unseen his father welcomed him back giving him a position with the company where he quickly rose through the ranks when douglas was lieutenant of the granite defense company he was contacted by a party under attack by raiders the call sounded desperate and he came from an ncr battalion fighting raiders brotherhood knights containing a pre-war threat or kaiser's scouts seeking new lands Let's go for the Brotherhood. I have no idea. When Douglas arrived with his team, the situation of the defenders had grown more dire, their battered defenses crumbling quickly under a determined but almost equally attritioned raider party. Looking over the sad state of both parties, Douglas decided to wipe them out lest they reveal the Enclave's survival, which reduces just uh, war goal time for justification and gain manpower, or help take down the raiders. We can improve relations quickly. This also gives us a connection with this faction, Gains National Spirit, Friends in the Brotherhood, Research Speed plus 3%. That's pretty good. We're going to take down the Raiders. All right. I have no idea if this is a good setup or not. I kind of liked the previous one better. But we are going to reform. Douglas Granite is the current country leader. Exclusive with Purity. Then we get the Legitimacy Tutorial. Which I don't remember if we had last time. Is that a new thing? I don't really know. Uh, okay, so we do need to hide our activities from the bear. Let's just go ahead and do that now. Get that ball a-rolling. There's nothing else here to do but sit back and wait. We do have some planes. That'll certainly be nice. I suppose we could go kill the Sierra army. Uh, they don't have much, so, I mean, it wouldn't be too hard to do, I think. Okay, we are reforming. For the first time in centuries, our authority has extended beyond core Enclave members. This is a new mechanic. Considering our previous interactions with these newfound citizens could easily be misinterpreted as attempted genocide, which it was, proving ourselves a legitimate government will take time and effort. Certain choices we'll make, what we make will increase or decrease our legitimacy. Higher legitimacy comes with bonuses to our rule, 
and allows for new choices in our focus tree. Cool. Load of legitimacy comes with penalties, at least until we find a way to keep the Wastelanders loyal, regardless of their opinions. You'll notice that the negative effects of our low legitimacy are currently very weak. The effects of legitimacy become more severe as our population expands. Fascinating. Okay. So, non-enclave population is currently 0%. So, as we expand, that's going to grow. And that means that uh, legitimacy is going to become more relevant as time goes on. Right now, there are no effects. But presumably, it's going to hurt our political power gain, our non-core manpower, and our mobilization speed until it gets to a certain level. Maybe over 50%? And then it becomes positive? I don't know. So, I'll keep that in mind. Or, the Enclave will tell them what to think. Immediately lose legitimacy. Here's my question. Does it stack? So, for example, if I pick this up right now, I have zero. Do I lose nothing? Or am I permanently 5% less? I'm not going to take the risk. Let's go for the 5%. It doesn't look like it stacks, so maybe I could have gotten some freebies there. Alright, still, I have no idea how difficult it's going to be to get legitimacy. Maybe this opens up some early options. So now we have some choices that we need to make. Let's start by looking at the presidential victory speech. Stability and political power. Pretty good. We can provoke the purists or reach out to the centrists and attempt to improve our technocracy uh, ruling party, which is okay. Uh, consolidate power if we have 50% support for the reformer faction. Purge the scientists or purge the officers, both of them apparently, so all the people who are evil. And then assassinate Dr. Anderson. Which ruins stability, but also gets rid of the oligarchy faction. Well, mostly. It does a lot. Fascinating. Okay. The City of Crime. Gain the Annex War Goal against whomever controls New Reno. And once we do that, we get some other fun stuff. Okay. Sure. Down over here, we cannot do the American Dream or Home is Nevada. So we need to have Purge the Opposition first. I do not see a Purge the Opposition option. Supposedly that will show up somewhere. And down over here we have the Department of Defense, which costs, interestingly, some army experience. And can lead to some fun doctrine stuff. I'm sure this is going to make us more effective at fighting. Okay. The economic miracle. So I guess we'll eventually have to make a decision. Do we want to go for Nevada? Or do we want to go for the American Dream? Which could eventually lead, I guess, to a Californian Civil War? Amongst a bunch of different things over here. Fascinating. So this is going to give us eventually the option to fight the Kaisar. Fascinating. Okay, I have no idea which one's going to end up being better for us. Um... I look at the state of Nevada, and I see things like the Southwest Commonwealth and all these cool things. Like, there's going to be a lot of faction control, it looks like. Whereas this one might be more Conquest and Reform America. Which I might want to do. It depends a lot on what we have. So do we want to go for the Annex War Gold? Not quite yet. Let's go for the base stability and the political power. Just try to improve our country a little bit. Get more political power so we can survive against the bear. Major General Grimm speaks out in favor of Anderson. Crap. During a heated argument in the officer's mess hall today, Major General Grimm has loudly spoken out in favor of Franklin Anderson and his ideas about the Enclave's future. A few choice words were aimed at both the mutants of the NCR and our president. While the officer in question may be capable leader in the field, we should note the opinions of the commanders we appoint to lead. What they say in the mess hall and over the radio will always affect our loyal soldiers. Demote him so he's no longer a... I guess mean, it's this guy right here, so he's no longer a field marshal. He's entitled to his opinions... We'll put his name on a list just in case. Hang on. I'm a reformer. Which puts us as intellectuals. So, technocracy, I think, is what we're worried about. Yeah. We had this problem before where the purists are actually the elites. I'm pretty confident intellectuals is going to be the technocracy. So, we want to keep that up. Or we could speak to him personally. Douglas has always had a way with words. This shouldn't be the first purist hardliner he brought to his side. A chance he ceases to be a purist, a chance he becomes a reformer, and a 50% chance that we just become not very technocratic. Let's speak to him. Traitor amongst our scientists. Okay, we had this sort of thing before too. So we're going to have treacherous scientists. 
Secrets were stolen. A small group of traders made off in a vertebrate and almost all of our old military codes. Regardless of their intentions, this betrayal is a severe blow. Many old military bases, including the heavily fortified lower levels of the Sierra Army Depot, are now forever lost to us. Blame the purists. We gain justifications for a crackdown. Do it. So what happened to you? He became a reformer! Awesome! We got Grimm on our side. That, in theory, could make things a lot easier going forward. Okay, so unfortunately we are losing intellectual support as time goes on, and the elites are becoming more popular. So we're going to need to find a way to start increasing our daily gain for the reformer faction. I suppose a thing we could do is probably get a political advisor like this guy. It would reduce our war support, but it would greatly increase our intellectual support, which seems pretty good to me. Yeah, I think I think that that is what we're going to do. We cannot go for the genocidal ar uh, officer, even though he is pretty good in a lot of other ways. So yeah, we're going to want to go for Boris T. That's going to cost me some political power. We can hold out that long. Desert Rangers just declared war on the Vipers. Last time we played, that didn't go well for you. But we'll see if things change for you. I don't know. There's the presidential victory speech. Okay. So, provoke the purists, gain a justification for a crackdown, or reach out to the centrists, which improves the popularity of technocracy by 3%, and then we have questions about the NCR. So, crackdown? Hmm. Hmm. 50 more political power is nice. This is going to let me stabilize a lot faster. I don't know what this does. I don't know what we mean by justifications for a crackdown. Hang on, here's something right here. Okay, crackdown. Lose manpower, base stability, reduce the support of oligarchy, gain support for technocracy. Mary Orwich leaves. So presumably we're going to be killing people by doing this. We could also hold a small speech. Well, that's fun. Arranged disappearances, wild promises. Intellectual support goes down, though, over time, for 90 days. And then when removed... Okay, so after 90 days, we've lost permanent intellectual support, and then we lose the 10% that we gain because we're not going to fulfill our promises. So it's a short-time boost in Reformer, probably, to give us new options as far as... Um, National focuses are concerned. We're going to reset out to the centrists. We're going to try to get the political power necessary to get a reformer. So we can increase our uh, permanent gain. Well, not permanent, but at least increase our gain of intellectual support. Traders in the officer corps, we'll have to deal with them later. Military leader co uh, cost, starting level of new leaders, stability, max planning. And the elites get more support. Ouch. Promotion. Recently, a commander position has opened up. There are two available candidates eligible for promotion, an older, experienced Navarro veteran, and a younger, outspoken reformer. The experienced man becomes a leader, or promote the loyal man. I think I'm going to go for the loyal man, though I like the army experience, and that probably would have opened up the ability to go for the Department of Defense that we saw down this way. However, I think there are plenty of other ways we can get army experience over time. I'd rather just have some more stability in the short term, right now, we are outpacing the elites, technically. So we'll have to try for that. Disorganized remnants, yeah, there's a lot of chief of army things we'll want to do eventually, blah, 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 blah. We're just waiting for 150. There's Ohm's Law for the research speed. Love it. This is ahead of time. Can't do anything with that. Uh, we are going to go for... I don't need the production efficiency at the moment. We don't need anything there either. Don't need ships. Don't need planes. Could go for a doctrine. And then there are things, of course, like maintenance companies, which we know we're going to need eventually. Let's go for the defense and breakthrough value. Uh, pretty soon we are going to want to kill New Reno. I can train some units. I don't have any equipment with which to train. So that's not necessarily going to work. I need to set up a front line here. And a front line here, and we'll have to assign probably the two veterans to, we'll assign all of you here, and then these two here, and your goal is to push to Nixon, and then to Lovelock, can I please edit you, no, alright, we'll come back to that then, 
And then you, sorry, have an offensive line down to New Reno. Why is that not working? There we go. All right, we'll just do that for now. I could do some pair drops, and that might be a way to go. I don't even have an air base, I just realized. We can't even use the vertebrates that we've got. Fun. Jack Shadow Churchill speaks out in favor of Anderson. We can speak to him. Again, a chance that this works and a chance it doesn't. Well, we're going to lose uh, Technocracy regardless. There's a good chance we can get him to join. So let's go for Shadow Churchill. And the result is what? He's reckless, but I think he lost Purist. I think? It's hard to say for sure. We did get this new guy here. He's a reformer. He's a reformer. So a couple of terrible leaders. That's a reformer. So Mary Orwich is currently a purist. So this guy may not be a reformer, but at least he's no longer... Whoops. But at least he's no longer a purist, so that should make it easier for me to retain things, right? Thomas Rimmy Rim. You're pretty good. Huh. Okay. Well, I do think it's still probably better. No, let's go. Let's go for Lieutenant, Lieutenant Scott Blair. Let's put them in charge of the army for the time being. I don't know. I'm guessing as far as what's going to happen here. Reaching out to centrists. Done. Questions about the NCR. It appears the purists have been spreading the rumor that we are looking to compromise with the NCR. Some have even dared suggest we would surrender to our old and hated nemesis. Purists, moderates, and even many reformers have absolutely no intention of letting bygones be bygones. Thus, the question is posed during our conference what to do. We have no intention of compromising. You promise not to make peace or dodge the question. I guess I'm going to promise not to make peace with the NCR. I eventually do want to kill them probably anyway, right? Questions about the mutants. While we have made much progress in introducing the idea of outsiders as something else than target practice, many are still unsure about our intentions towards the mutants. Rumors have ranged from possible integration of wastelanders into our ranks to ridiculous suggestions of forced intermarriage between pure and unpure humans. It appears that there are many doubting purists and moderates who would be much more at ease after the promise of a peaceful but separated existence provided the mutants know who is in charge. No integration, or what about them? So I think that there is a chance that I'm going to let them be members, so forget that. Some have raised the question of whether we should integrate ghouls into the Enclave. On the one hand, many of the ghouls have come across are feral monsters, but it has been pointed out that some of them know pre-war America, and perversely, are more American than many wastelanders. Let's explain the real difference between feral. Okay, so there's a chance that we're going to let this happen. I'm thinking this might lead to a lot more manpower and maybe some other options in the future, but I don't know. Questions about the Brotherhood of Steel. While not as hated as the NCR, the Brotherhood of Steel played a major role in the destruction of Navarro, and the loss of many of our comrades, brothers, and fathers. It was inevitable that a voice in the room would be raised to ask what we would mean to do with the power-armored Boy Scouts occupying so many of our military bases using stolen government property. Never ally, dodge the question, or the Brotherhood should be pitted against the NCR. That I agree with. So let's not make any promises, and let's try to pit them against them. Maybe that helps. I don't know. Alright, so we can't do any consolidation of power, so the only thing left to do now is a city of crime, and that is fighting. So we're going to have to fight, and that's probably okay. Let's go for the Reformer and get that uh, automatic intellectual support. So now we should see that this is going to be going up. It does not appear to be going up. Well, that's a problem. Why is it not going up? I was told that it would go up. We may have to do some uh, crackdowns or something. Hold a speech... Change in popularity, arrange disappearances, change in oligarchy. Okay. We're not going to do this a second. But I want to have the option to move toward consolidating power. But that needs 50%, which we've kind of shot ourselves in the foot by not making some promises. So we have to find a way around that. So I'm going to have to do some events that let me consolidate power a bit more. Not by much. We're at 48%. Like, we're, we're not too far off. Loyal Reformer. Intellectual support goes up, but we lose attack and stuff. Still, that could help a little bit. I don't understand this, by the way. It's like, increases by 0.2. It did not increase by 0.2. At all. So that's a lie. But okay. 
So we're going to be finishing up our City of Crime in two days, one day, and done. Can't pick up anything new here until we have finished. So I guess what we're going to do is go for a decision, hold a speech, and that will give me 50%, but it's not actually enough. It lied. It's like just under 50%. We now need to arrange some disappearances. So we'll do that too. Now we can choose Consolidate Power. Let's do that and gain the stability. We had to do things a little bit immorally, not too bad. Now, the moment we declare war on New Reno, we are going to make ourselves larger and more likely to get detected by the NCR. So maybe I wait. We can reveal ourselves to the NCR? What? Requires more than 30% legitimacy. I guess when the NCR is fighting Kaisar's Legion, we can reveal that we exist and maybe they'll ask for our help? Or we'll offer? I don't know. I'm going to wait until this is done just so I can have a cheap cost for hiding from the NCR, and then we're going to fight. That's all that I'm trying to do there. Consolidation of power is done. Tensions have been high since the elections. It appears support for the purists has only intensified as a result, especially in the upper echelons of our government. To address the situation, we have collected all those with grievances toward the new U.S. government into one room, awaiting answers. Somebody hand me my speech, my fellow Americans, because we are charismatic, political power, and change of popularity by 10%. Done. No good reason not to do that, as far as I can tell. So, that's finished. To continue, we would need purest officers demoted by our decision, or scientists demoted by our decision. We would execute somebody and lose a lot of stability. Wow! All of this is terrible. But the stability is based on the popularity of the elites. So if the elites are not very popular, we can kill people with really no consequence? All right, well, there are no national focuses that I think we can do until we win a war against New Reno. So we do have to go to war now. And we'll do that. Uh, of course, I need you guys to push through the New Reno outskirts and then to New Reno pro uh, proper. I need you guys to push through Nixon and then Lovelock. And I still don't have an airbase, I don't think, so I can't use any of my uh, vertebrates. So we just straight up need to win some important... ...fights. What? I just died. Well, that's hilarious. Okay. Sure, let's rebuild up to this point. All right, let's take a mulligan on that. This guy is walking right up on in there, which I cannot allow, so I need to have you pin him down. Thank you. Uh, if we can break through, um, I'm pretty confident we'll be more or less unimpeded getting to the new Reno outskirts. I'm going to have one of you back up and go this way toward Nixon and Lovelock, because I think we can get all of our uh, victory points. We did just get our power armor, which means we'll be able to start producing that. Let's go for the monthly population, since that's usually pretty good, and the defense... For our units, just make that better. Alright, still need to make sure this guy does not walk into the Sierra Army Depot, because he almost just did. Now he's trying to push against me. Okay, we're getting surrounded at the moment. Um, I need to get up over here. Get to Nixon, dang it. Somehow. Okay, get back over to the outskirts. Don't let him take these points. We're almost able to get there. Come on, get to Nixon. Need to grab the outskirts now. Encounter with the Crimson Caravan. We saw something about this before. We're going to go ahead and let NCR suspicions go up. Okay, I think we're unimpeded at this point. We just have to grab this point, which we're about to do. And then we'll have them. Okay, there goes New Reno. That worked. Take all states. Done. Okay, now we can continue with our national focus. So, we need to decide who we are going to work with in New Reno. Going cold turkey, deal with the Mordinos, checkmate, the bishops, a shared dream with the whites, or the Salvatores. If I recall correctly, the Salvatores are the ones that you have to play as, um, if you play as Nerino in the base game of Old World Blues, playing as the Salvatores eventually can get the Enclave in the game, even without the Enclave Reborn submod. As far as which is better, I don't know. I, have, I, I don't know anything about any of these guys. 
selling drugs and other vices. Plotted to bring New Reno into the NCR. The Whites dream, sorry, Wrights dream of a peaceful and prosperous city. Salvatore, remember our last time in New Reno. It might be worth cutting a deal with them again. Let's try for the rights, since they apparently have the right idea about a prosperous, peaceful city. And I'm trying to be a prosperous, peaceful America. Hey, look, we have a factory. Let's produce some power armor. And I guess basic infantry weapons and some support equipment. And this will have to do for the moment. Don't have enough resources. Shocking. Uh, I don't have any extra civilian factories, so I can't do any trading. All right, dealing with the rights. Some say that the Wright family has spent the last few decades building with one hand and destroying with the other. But compared to the other families, this makes them almost redeemable. Mr. Wright's vision of a more peaceful and stable New Reno is not entirely incompatible with our own. Allow him to go legit. Unlock a political advisor. Better infantry and civilian construction speed. All right. Or there's no place for his kind here. Gain political power. And three arms workshops. That's hard to say no to. I like the idea of base stability, but I also really need military factories. So we're going to do that. Okay, we're going to increase these by a reasonable margin. Uh, again, still can't really produce the power armor very quickly, but we'll just start working on it. We can apparently continue dealing with other families. In fact, we have to deal with all of them. Oh, all right. Well, let's go with the Salvatores. I figured we'd pick one or the other, but now that I think about it, it did not say that that was the case. They're not exclusive. We can get the advisor. I guess let's hold off on getting a new advisor until I know... Oh, that's interesting. Until I know what the other options are. Respected by scientists. Elite support. Terrible idea. Could go for the respected sergeant, though. Um, I don't know about that. Let's go for a military theorist for the army experience gain. I generally do find that to be a valuable uh, effort. Carson City will go for all of this. Ah, wait. So we'll do some there. Some there. Isn't there a way... I thought you... Yeah, you can do this. There we go. I knew you could do this. Alright. You two assigned to this division. There you go. Alright. Don't think we'll be fighting Carson City anytime soon, but be nice to see the option. Insufficient resources, I'm aware. Uh, we need to hide from the NCR. Of course, we did just grow, which means I don't have a lot of time to get more political power. Old allies. The Salvatores have been useful to the Enclave in the past, dealing with us in order to expand their own influence in New Reno. Perhaps they can be useful once again. A puppet ruling New Reno in our name could help make the situation in the city less suspicious to any outside observers. Mr. Salvatore's old smuggling connection may also prove a valuable resource to us, should we decide to keep him alive. He can rule as a puppet, but we lose legitimacy. Increases NCR suspicion and is reduced by three. That's not a lot. Live under house arrest, or we rule New Reno now. <sighs> the political power would be good. Base stability, on the other hand, is also really important. I'm going to let him live under house arrest. We're not going to start a new national focus for a little bit. Let's save up on some political power so I can hide from the NCR. We don't need to wait very long, but I also don't have a lot of time before bad things are going to happen to us. Remnants wish to return. We've been contacted by the leader of a sizable company of Enclave Remnants. They have survived the decades of, as raiders, greatly feared uh, due to their advanced tactics and technology. Having heard rumors of the return of the Enclave, they are being asked to reinstate into our armied forces. While the extra manpower could be useful, their disdain for the mutants rival that of Anderson and his ilk. Uh, I don't think I can justify this much as I want to. 8% popularity is just a straight-up no. No Enclave here. And there goes the base stability that I just got. Ugh, all right. We're hiding from the bear. Now we choose a new focus. Checkmate. And we're going to end our video here. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed and are looking forward to a new and improved Enclave series. I have no idea how this is going to compare in terms of power and fun. I just think it's going to be really fun to find out. So hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. Hit that notify bell to see my future content. And I will see you guys next time.